Okay, so today we're going to be setting up a Raspberry Pi and Pi Hole so you can do DNS ad blocking through your whole network. So first off, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. We are going to need an Ethernet cable. We are going to need a USB power cable, a power adapter, and lastly, a micro SD card. We're going to use a 32 gigabyte one in this instance. Okay, so first off, we have to pop on to pi-hole.net. And on here, as you can see, is it's advertised Pi Hole as a network wide ad blocking service. Now, it is completely free, however, there is a donate option there. If you do like it, please donate. It is great software. I certainly have already, it's worth every penny. Now, it shows you here just a couple of simple steps for setting up. Now, it says install a supported operating system, and we're going to be using Raspbian, or at least a variant of Raspbian, which is what we're going to be using on our Raspberry Pi Model 3B. And then we're going to basically install the Pi Hole software over the top of it. Now shown here in the steps, it just says install Pi Hole, set it as your DNS server. If you don't have a router that's capable of doing that, we'll show you how to set it manually. And you can block ads everywhere, even on the go. And that's just through the use, usually with a VPN. So we'll cover a little bit about that later as well. The cool thing about this is it gives you so much options for its web interface. You can basically monitor more or less everything. As we can see here in this example, you get your total queries, queries blocked, percentage blocked, domains unblocked list, and it shows you it in a nice kind of broken down view as well. It's got built-in features for being a DHCP server, so if you'd rather that your Pi hole allocate your IP addresses on your network, it can certainly do that rather than your router. You can manage your whitelist and blacklist, so you can just amend that if you want specific websites to show ads, just that way sometimes it supports them and they can make a little bit of money from it if you like their content, and you can block ones that are really, really not annoying. So how do you set up Pi hole? Well, we're going to be using the Raspberry Pi Model 3B. This is the one here that we've got that's in the case at the moment. And with that, we're going to use a 32 gigabyte micro SD card to load up an operating system and then we're going to install Pi Hole. The operating system of choice is going to be Diet Pi. Now, the reason I've chosen this is it's highly optimized. It's very lightweight, as you can see here, truly optimized. It's a very simple interface, it's all command based and it's got so much software that you can install from a list on it. So we're just gonna scroll down to Raspberry Pi. You select your Raspberry Pi here. It will work on all models. All you need to do is download the image. Now I've downloaded it already, so we're not gonna download it. But to be able to put that on the micro SD card, you're also gonna need Etcher, which is free to download as well. So if you want to download and go ahead and install that, that should take just a few seconds. Once you open up Etcher, you'll be presented with this page. As you can see, it's already pre-selected our micro SD card, but we'll double check that that is the right selection in a moment. So we want to go to select image, but before we do so, the image that downloads is in a RAR format or a compressed format. We use WinRAR, but you can use 7-Zip or any other compression software to extract it. And all you do is extract your files. Now we've extracted it to this folder here, which just contains the ISO of the file that we require to flash. So we're just going to select the image, we're going to select Diet Pi. We are then going to go to change, the only other drive that shows here is 32 gigabytes, so that must be my micro SD card that's connected. Um, double check though your drive lettering just to make sure you're selecting the right option, the right drive, and then click flash. If you're presented with this pop up here, just click yes, and it will begin erasing and writing to the micro SD card. Now this might take a little bit of time, so we'll just let that write to the card and then what will happen is it will verify. Once it's verified, we're pretty much ready to go. Okay, and as we can see, once it is finished flashing and doing a verification on the actual drive, it's going to pop up and ask you to format it. You're just going to click cancel, and that's because the sections of it that's partitioned that is not successfully mounted in Windows for you to be able to view. So once it is done, you can just eject that disk. Once that's ejected, we can pop that in the Raspberry Pi.
Okay, so the Raspberry Pi's now got its micro SD card inside of it. I've connected it directly to my router using the power cable for the USB and an Ethernet cable directly from the Raspberry Pi to my router. Now, the reason I've done it through the cable rather than doing it wirelessly is there's less latency. So the connection is pretty much instant and it means that there's not any delay when loading up any websites because this is going to be our new DNS resolver essentially. Now, you can use USB Wi-Fi or the built-in Wi-Fi chip that's on the Raspberry Pi depending on your model, some require that extra Wi-Fi dongle. I'll leave a link in the description if you're looking to set that up. You have to do it in the config file before you put your micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi. But moving on, the way I like to do it is I just bring up my router's homepage. I would go to my wired clients. Now there's only two wired devices in my case, my PC and the Diet Pi. So I now know what the IP address is for my Diet Pi. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use software called Putty. Putty is a completely free download and I will pop that in the description as well for you to download. And all you simply do is put in your IP address and click open. It will give you a little pop up for warning for potential security breaches. Click yes, we are the one that's are logging in so we know what the details are. We are then going to type in the username which is root and then the password which is diet pie. Click OK. The installer for the Diet Pi will download and update the operating system and apply it to your micro SD card. That should take just a few moments there. And depending on the Raspberry Pi you've got, it might be a little bit slower or a little bit longer, but it should take just a few minutes so it can action everything. You'll be presented with the Diet Pi survey page. We're going to select opt out for that. It's going to apply those preferences and take just a few seconds. And it's going to take us to the change of password. I suggest you do this with both of them, the global password and the Unix password. Make sure your password meets the criteria required. And we'll select OK to disable the console to reduce memory consumption. So just click OK here. And again, it's going to apply those settings to the Pi. Okay, so the Diet Pi software menu will come up. We're going to go down to search. We're going to type in Pi Dash Hole. We're then going to use the spacebar to check that on the list for installation and go to OK. It's going to prompt us for static IP. We're just going to click cancel for that just now. Then we're going to go down to install and go to OK and it's going to begin that installation. Now go ahead and download Pi Hole and install it to the Pi. This may take longer if you've got a less powerful version of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, we're now presented with the automated installer. Click OK here. Pi Hole is free, however, donate, it is awesome. And this needs a static IP, so we're just going to click OK. Okay, we're prompted to select a DNS provider. We're just going to go with Google and click OK. We're going to leave all the block lists on and go to OK as well and leave both protocols ticked. So click OK here too. Now it's allocated an IP address for the static IP. We're going to, just going to use that for the moment and click yes. It's going to give us some details of IP conflict. I'll explain that later. Admin web interface. Leave on and click OK. The same with the logs and the same with the privacy settings. Just select OK for all those. Okay, it's now just applying those selections to the Pi Hole software itself. And installation complete. So take note here of the password at the bottom. That's the way we're going to access it. It will be the IP address followed by admin. So just click OK here once you've noted those down. Block public access. We're going to click yes, but the next selection we don't want to show a blocking page as it can lower performance. And we're going to go ahead and action both those changes here. So we're going to go ahead, click OK, and let it reboot here. So we're going to give the Raspberry Pi just a few minutes to reboot and load back up fully into Diet Pi. And then we're going to go back into Putty, use your IP address. And we're just going to basically log in and make sure it's running before we do anything else. Okay, so everything looks fine. It's loaded up the Diet Pi absolutely fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to load up the browser, fire the IP address in, as well as admin to be taken to the Pi Hole homepage. 
Go to login, put your password in from earlier, and now we've got access to the full dashboard. So let's just open Microsoft Edge and check a website that has ads. Let's pick a bad one. We're going to go to speedtest.net. And as you can see, I don't have any ad blocker software enabled on Microsoft Edge. And the page is covered in ads. Next, we are going to go to our network settings. We are going to go to change adapter options under advanced network settings. And what we're going to do is just make sure you select the right adapter. So we are using Ethernet Network 2. So we're going to go to Properties. We're going to go down to our IPv4, double click it, use the following DNS. I've inputted it like this. So just pop in the DNS IP address from the Raspberry Pi and 8888 is the alternative. Apply those, minimize everything. We're going to bring up the Pi dashboard. As you can see, it looks like it's picking up some already. And then what we're going to do is we are going to bring up Microsoft Edge again and we are going to go to the same website speedtest.net and we're going to see that the website now has no ads they have all been blocked and caught by Pi-hole and you can see on the left hand side the percentage blocked has been up to 59% if you want to apply this to your whole network rather than by device separately log on to your router's homepage you can find the details under your network section normally and under internet for myself on this one your router may vary depending on where these settings are but you'll find it usually in there under advanced and using a following dns address and again you just pop in the exact same settings and basically that'll apply it to all devices that are connected to your router rather than you have to manually go around each of them and update all those details so it save you a little bit of time and essentially that is how you do network wide ad blocking using a raspberry pi and a pi hole Oh, 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 oh,